All right, hello everyone. I'm gonna do a quick and dirty tutorial that I've been, f been a little workflow that I've been doing for uh, making cookie cutters with my 3D printer for a certain young lady that I may or may not know. She knows who she is. Uh, anyway, so um, this is probably not the most efficient way. It's probably not the best way. It's probably not even a safe way to do this, but it's the way that works for me and has been getting good results. And uh, in fact, this cookie here is a result of that. But let's assume for a second, let's say our lady friend was out at a party somewhere and saw this cute cookie and wanted to make it herself. And so she snapped a picture with her cell phone and sends it to you. And this is what you have to start with, this photo here. So the question is, other than going out and buying the 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 cookie cutter online because it's probably out there. Let's I mean, it's probably it's probably cheap enough. But again, this is it's the principle of the matter. We want to make this ourselves. It's to impress, right? So this is the workflow that I'm using. Again, probably not efficient. Probably not straightforward. Probably there's a way to do this a lot easier. But I use three tools. I start with Adobe Illustrator to uh, get an outline, take that, dump it into Fusion to create the 3D model, the STL file that I then I have a Prusa Mark IV. So I drop that over into Prusa Slicer and slice that into G code and then drop that into my th the, th the thumb drive on the printer. And voila, sometimes about an hour to two hours later, I have a um, cookie cutter ready to be delivered. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing we do, we're in illustrator here. We go ahead, we go open that file. Let's see here. All right. So again, I am not a, I'm a engineer by training. Um, not a designer, not a whatever. So, um, this is probably going to be very painful for some people and uh, enjoy. Um, you can always let me know what I could have done better, faster, cheaper, easier uh, in comments. Uh, and I may or may not listen to them. Probably not because at my age, I'm a creature of habit. All right. So the first thing I do is I reduce the artboard down to fit right around the picture. And then I... Um, go ahead and zoom into that. All right. Next, I add a layer. So I get layer two up here. Come over here to the uh, rectangle tool. And I draw a rectangle that's roughly around the size of it. Now, obviously, I can't see crap. So that's useless. So we go into the fill button and we tell it to no fill. And then I like, prefer, um, a black line some people might like a different color I'm not sure that it really matters I know that in like some laser cutters and some plasma cutters that different colors can mean different things but uh, for my purposes from going uh, generating a DXF file for fusion uh, it doesn't matter and I just prefer uh, black so so basically at this point I get the square I roughly get it to the, the, the outer dimensions. Now, let's start the fun part. So we're gonna add a bunch of anchor points all around our path here. And again, this is probably where there's someone out there in the internet world going, ah, don't do it that way. That's stupid. And I'm like, yep, that sounds about right. So we're going to make a bunch of bunch of uh, anchor points and then I just basically start grabbing them and roughly outline the drawing underneath and just sit here, listen to some music, relax, chill. Don't think about much in low. So just keep doing this. And then 
as I go along. I'm like, huh, if I want it smoother, I just keep going back down to adding anchor points. And just again, wherever I want one on the path, just keep. Now, we're going to smooth this out here in a little bit. So I don't get totally crazy. We're going to let the software do its magic for us here in a second. But again, the goal is to kind of get a roughly clean outline. I think that looks good for now. So let's keep adding. Let's just keep, you know, again, just roughly getting the outline of what we want to make. We'll zoom in here, poke out here a little bit more. Maybe we'll add this up. Add one here. Add one here. So yeah, right, we're, we're not, you know, it's not perfect and doesn't have to be because we're going to let, again, we're going to let the, the Adobe Illustrator do some magic for us here soon. Okay. All right, I'm going to add just two more down here for my OCD. So bring this in a little bit, bring this one down a little bit. Uh, you know what? Still not happy with this up here. Let's add just a couple more for this guy. All right. And again, this is just a tutorial video. You get the rough idea. Or at least you now know what not to do. All right, so with that, so when you, you got it kind of where you like it, let's go ahead and we're going to pick the path here. Then we go over to here to this cool thing called the smooth tool. We click the smooth tool and then we click on the path and look at that. It kind of rounds it out, makes it look pretty. All right. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and save this in case we ever come back to it. Then we're going to export it and actually, again, make sure it's selected. It. Um, export, export as, DXF file. Yep, I've already done it. We're going to just do that again. And I want to show you, I do scale one millimeter equals one unit and export the selected art only. Make sure that's checked and hit OK. And just do one more last save. All right, so now on our desktop, we have a uh, like an Autodesk DXF file that we can go ahead and import into Fusion. And let's go ahead and hop into that now. All right, in Fusion, I'm going to click the front. So I'm looking at the front. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create, New Sketch. Create the, uh, put it on the uh, plane that I want to do the drawing. Go over to insert, insert DXF, go in, select from my computer, there's the DXF file, hit OK. Um, for some reason still it puts it in a, up here, again, probably doing something wrong. Um, so anyway, so hit move copy, and I uh, just select the whole thing, and then just drag it down to where you get it over here by the uh, the origin and then I roughly yeah there we go so 100 millimeters 100 millimeters roughly again that four inches um, uh, out for the uh, the cookie itself will be about four inches when we cut it so uh, that's the outer dimensions so we hit OK. It's moved to where I want it. Let's zoom to fit in. All right. So what I like to do at this point is I like to have a little bit of uh, we need to actually make the wall because this area here is going to be the hole. So we need a little bit of we need to bump it out a little bit uh, to be able to have a place to basically kind of like the handle part, something to grab onto, and then the wall of the, of the cookie cutter itself. Uh, I will go through some dimensions that I use, and um, maybe you'll like them, maybe you won't, but I'll tell you what works for me. 
But first, I'm um, going to go ahead and offset the uh, drawing. So we're going to pull this out. Uh, and it looks like we're going to make this so I go with 1 to 2 millimeters for the, the part that's actually going to cut the dough. Um, much less than 1 millimeter with m the way I've got my, my printer set up, I kind of get holes. Uh, more than a, when I get closer to two millimeters, uh, my girlfriend doesn't like the way it cuts the dough. So we're going to go with about one millimeter uh, for the wall thickness. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another offset from the original and going to make that about eight millimeters. That's going to give us that kind of, it's going to give it some rigidity, give us something to hold on to. And uh, at that point, we're done with the sketch, so we can finish sketch. And now we can extrude. Again, I am not, you know, a ninja at any event of this. I'm the jack of some, master of absolutely nothing. So we're going to extrude. We're going to go into the this guy first. I do about 25 millimeters. Roughly, I think it's an inch-ish. Um, go back, turn the sketch back on, extrude again for the handle, and then for this guy, I go for about six millimeters. And like that, we have a cookie cutter that's ready for 3D printing almost. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and select the whole thing again, go over to the utilities, make, 3D print, uh, turn off, if it's, if it's send the 3D print utilities on, I turn that off so I can just get the uh, binary STL file. The units are in millimeters. I've already selected the whole body. I hit okay. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, cookie cutter tutorial and save it to my desktop. All right, then at this point, we're gonna go fire up Prusa. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the last piece of the puzzle here. I start with repairing the SDL file. Um, so there's the cookie cutter test. I oh, it basically uh, creates an object file and I guess cleans up any mistakes. That I may have made, so I hit save the object file. File was repaired. Do I need to do that? I don't know. Do I do it? Yeah. Then file import, take that object file and put it on the plate. Check it out, make sure that, yeah, that looks about the right size I was expecting. Then I go over here, right click, I go fix by Windows repair algorithm. Let that do its thing, and then I right click again and hit simplify model. I leave it to a level of detail to medium, don't change anything, and I just hit apply. And just go up here again, make sure you, I always go for quality, not speed for my prints. So if it goes too fast, it doesn't seem to print good like. Uh, it doesn't always adhere to the bed. So I go for quality. Uh, I use PLA, PLA is corn based so it's food friendly kind of thing um, and then my nozzle on the Prusa Mark IV obviously you're going to vary based on yours infill 15 percent blah 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 nothing else I changed so I hit slice now and then export the g-code and save that to my desktop and I'm uh, it was starting with this current version of firmware and the, the, the Mark IV, they have, they introduced the binary G code, so it's .bg code now instead of just .g code. Um, it's a smaller file, more efficient, it's not human readable, so, uh, but it does seem to uh, speed up the print process. So with that, that is my workflow. I would just uh, take in, take that G code file, drop it on the thumb drive, put it in the printer, and uh, voila, um, you've got cookie cutters 
that you can then, like, if you're like me, I've decided, well, if I'm doing all this hard work, maybe I should just throw it on an Etsy shop and make a couple bucks, or not. Um, so I do, I have actually that one's already up there. Um, there's the final print. I scaled them in two different sizes to make it like a bigger cookie and a smaller cookie. Uh, again, just do that back. Uh, you can either do that uh, in the do uh, Illustrator when you're making it. You can save two different sizes. Uh, or um, scale it uh, in a, you can do scaling kind of stuff in um, Fusion 2. And actually, spoiler alert, that was actually the cookie that she made with this uh, cookie cutter. This guy right there made this cookie here. Obviously, she did the decorating, and she's way more artistic and skilled than I am. But that's his life. So anyway, that's my process for going from a drawing to a 3D printed cookie cutter. Any questions or comments, let me know, and thanks for watching.